Hello and welcome to Stop the Threat. My name is James Toll. On today's episode, we take you to the state of Kentucky for a reenactment which we have entitled Need to Act. But before I show you that, I want to just express to you how much we appreciate your input. If you have some suggestions, if you see something you're not comfortable with or that you would like to expand upon, email me, see me on social media. We look forward to those at the end of each show. All right, let me go back to the panel now and start with a question because uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting reenactment. And so the question to you guys is going to be, when does a moral decision to help someone outweigh the legal consequences of that decision? Uh, we're going to test this today uh, when one armed man versus two men fighting over a gun in a public location. So now you as a good armed citizen have to make a certain decision here. Sergeant? I think the decision that you make would be is, you know, is there life and limit stake? You know, I taught in a police academy quite a bit and I would teach recruits, look, if somebody was sticking up the McDonald's and you're sitting there having a hamburger, you can help him carry the cash register out. But if he starts letting rounds go or he's proning people out, you better take action. All right. Garrett? Yeah, we, we call that, uh, in the law enforcement, it's immediate defense of life. We call it idle. So if, 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 they're, if they're shooting people, harming people, stabbing people, now it's time to take you. No longer are you a witness, you're an active participant. Okay, so you're actually saying then a round has to go off somewhere. If they're displaying weapons and they're going at each other, or one has a weapon, one doesn't, now, no longer you're a witness, you got to start taking action. Okay, you want a, a legal view? Well, just given the facts, it's still a little bit cloudy. You have two men who are unarmed fighting with a person who's armed. And it's not clear, just based upon that statement, what the factual situation is. Is the armed person someone who is legally carrying the gun and he's trying to fight off two perpetrators? who may be trying to attack him, even though they're not armed, disparity of force, mm -hmm. disparity okay? Of force. So you, yeah. need, you need to take a, a few seconds and try and understand what is really going on before you take action. And I think that's really the reason why we do this show is because this decision process, draw or retreat, is really what the show is about. Is there anything legally that I need to bear in mind if I do this, if a situation is occurring, I need to protect myself. If I'm going to get involved, I need to legally know that I'm going to walk away, correct? That's right. And, and again, so I'm going to need to be able to um, say to the officer the reason why I inserted myself. And you need to understand who is who in that situation. Yeah, that's a good point. Who is who? All right. I like that. And it's very difficult to answer that question from a legal perspective until you're able to sort out, and it may take a few seconds to do that, you know, who is the perpetrator and who is someone who is an innocent person who is being subjected to a crime. So, in fact, you're saying to me, if I don't know that, then I don't need to be involved. Well, you may want to become involved, but you may need more time to figure out what the situation is. Hey, you know what? When we come back, I'm going to show you part one of this very interesting reenactment. Don't go away. Welcome back, viewers. Uh, we've just been discussing off camera what's going to take place here. I don't want to spoil it for you. So let's watch part one and really get into this.
can't do that, Chris. Take two to go home. David! Oh. Was that? I'll go check. David! I'll do it! I'll do it! Hey, you better get over here. There's a guy with a gun. I'll do it. Don't move. Chris, no! Call 911. There's a guy in the parking lot with a gun. I work at the gun store at 4500 Canyon Road. My boss and I just heard gunshots out in the parking lot. There's two men out there struggling over a gun. He just went closer to help. He's wearing a, a, a black shirt and blue jeans. Kevin, stop! Stop! Please! Uh, okay, there's a lot of movement in here. There's a lot of things we need to look at. Let's just start with the easy one. Three 911 calls are coming in. Three different operators are taking these calls. That's got to get out to you guys in a cruiser. What are you getting? Well, you're going to get a little more urgency from your dispatch because you're getting multiple calls. And I, I think they're, not that they're going to take it more or less seriously, that you're going to be able to tell, listening to dispatchers, that they're a little more serious that this is really actually happening. And they might even say, a good dispatcher might tell you, hey, we've got multiple 911s on this. Okay, yeah, that's good, that's good. Garrett? Um, the concern is, well, who's who in the zoo? Who, yeah, uh, right. Which one is the suspect, which one is the victim? Right. So uh, I'm, I'm already pre-planning my tactics before I get there, considering the information I get. So what I'm thinking is, hey, everyone's gonna get proned out, regardless who's there. Okay. They, if they're fighting over a gun, they're both going to get proned out. Okay. And I think that's a good point, that even though you may be the citizen who is a, the good guy uh, in this situation, whether you're involved in the actual fight or not, not, not important, but be expected that law enforcement may ask you to prone out. And so don't be upset by that, right? Because that's probably what's going to take place, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and you'd want to get everybody else as far away as, you know, and to a safe area as you, as you could, and then concentrate on the two. Because, like you said, you don't know who the good guy is and who the bad guy At is At this there. point, right. That was the point I brought up earlier. You need, you need to be able to sort out who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. It may take more time for a police officer rolling up. He's not going to know who the good guy and bad guy is. Okay, I'm looking out, let's just, just look at this for a minute. I'm looking out the window, I'm in the gun store, I see the guy who's obviously, I mean, he's holding a gun to his neck, it's a suicide kind of looking thing, and, and I'm just a citizen, David. so I'm gonna put a gun on, oh, and I'm gonna go out there. Actually, I may put it on, I may have it in my hand as I leave, and I start advancing on a situation that's taking place in the parking lot. How do you feel about that? Well, it's not the way you'd handle an EDP, that's for sure. And, and as, you know, you would really want to get, if you got a potential suicide there, you want to get somebody negotiating, talking to this guy. Can't and again, that, like I said, you'd want to clear away out. everybody else who, who innocent, who could get hurt in this, you know, melee here and try to minimize at least the potential for something bad to happen to somebody. Okay, I'm looking out the window. I'm just a good law-abiding citizen. And I look out the window and I see this taking place. I'm armed. Do I go out there and insert myself, Garrett? If you have a suicidal person with a gun to the, it appears to be a suicidal person with a gun to the head, you going out there and using deadly force against someone who wants to kill themselves, right. it's not a good idea. Well, yeah. the best thing to do is be a good witness, call it in, give a great description of the subject and the people that are trying to interact with him. Because if you look at the totality of the call, you have a homicidal and a suicidal subject. Okay, so they're fighting over a gun. Well, here we had the further complication. He saw the gentleman with the gun to his head. And then the other gentleman came up from behind him, tackled him. Now the two are struggling on the ground. He's advancing with his gun. 
So he has to make a decision, what am I going to do if the, the suicidal person wants to use the gun on the guy he's struggling with? Yeah, I like voice commands a lot. The police are on the way. Stop what you're doing. The cops are coming, man. You know, something like that. I, I like that before I like going to the gun. And, and, then, and then, as we have said many, many times in the past, once you draw that gun or bring the gun into the frame, all the options are gone. What are you going to do now? And then you have the female in close proximity. Yeah, she's, she's in threat. Right. We got and people then, around. And, then, and if you're, you're coming out of, two guys coming out of the gun store, you're just adding to this potential disaster. So we might go back to what Garrett said. You look out the window, you see what's taking place. You have to make that decision. Yeah, I see a gun waving around and people that might get hurt. Ah, it's tough. We come back, though. We probably have more to tell you. Don't go away. Welcome back, viewers. This is a very complicated situation, something that we hope no one has to be involved with. Um, but Garrett stumbled on, well, didn't stumble, but he mentioned something before we left, and I want to follow up on it. So go ahead, Garrett. Tell me again. So initially, when, when the two guys in the gun shop saw what was going on, the guy was waving the gun around. Great response. Two of them come out, draw their weapons okay. on the subject. Then he makes the mistake, one of them makes a mistake, well, go call number one. You always want to outgun your suspect. Two guns are better than one on one. So you're actually suggesting then that they should have stayed they should there. should have stayed there. Guns up. Let somebody else do the calling. Yeah. And, Someone and will. stay there. You, you agree with that, Sergeant? Um, yeah, I do. Um, if, if you get that far, I think they should have stayed in the gun store. First of okay. all, I don't yeah, think they right. should have. They, they, they've come out the door. But once once you yeah. commit okay. once to you that, commit, then right. yeah, I, I think I agree, I agree 100 percent that I'd rather have two guns pointed at this guy than one gun. And you don't have all the information. They're fighting over one gun. You don't know if the other guy is armed too. Right. And they decide maybe they don't want to fight with each other anymore. Now they want to fight with you. Okay. So you, what's the role of the two guys coming out of the gun store? What is their role in what's taking place? Well, I think Do they from, have one? from a legal perspective, I yeah. think they have an obligation to observe, call 911, let the police know what's going on, and wait to see whether there is a significant threat to, to themselves uh, in terms of, of death or severe bodily harm before they draw their arms. Okay. They have every right to protect their store. They in case this guy, in case this guy, maybe maybe one of these these knuckleheads want to enter the store now, okay, it, it's fine. But I, I don't think that they're helping the situation by jumping outside. Okay. I think they're complicating the situation. And again, we're talking about an EDP here, right. who's uh, you know unstable at at at, at best. At best. Right. Right. So so that complicates the whole matter. Mm. Okay, let's watch part two. It doesn't get any easier. Drop the gun! Now there's another guy with a gun. Uh, he's got a black shirt on, a pair of jeans. Uh... Stop it! Please don't! Stop fighting and drop the gun! No, 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 please don't shoot him! Don't shoot them! They're my brothers! They're both my brothers! Please don't! Please stop fighting! Stop it! I'm over here! I'm over here! Stop it! No, boys! Drop the don't shoot him! Get back! He's shooting him! He's shooting him! He's down! They're both down! Oh, one of them's not moving! Okay, I guess we can all probably imagine what the uh, shooter is probably thinking at that last moment there, and he's probably recalling whether or not he should have pulled that trigger. And I don't know how many times, did you anybody count the rounds? Maybe four or five rounds went yeah. off? And he was shooting into two guys. Oh, he just, he just shot one guy that was, on, at least one guy that's unarmed. 
Uh, he shot them both. I mean, uh, let God sort them out. I mean, you know, right. this is, uh, he, he might be facing a whole lot of problems. Okay, Gary? Yeah. He did show command saying, you know, hey, let go, stop Buddy, what you're doing. But you got to remember, you know, when someone who's emotionally disturbed or someone with mental illness, their emotions are high. Rationale is low. So he remember. had no clear shot there. Yeah. They were tussling around, you know, within split seconds. There's, I don't think there's any way he would have had a clear shot at, at the deranged person. You might be able to make a case had he shot the guy with the gun, but just blasting both of those guys, I, I can't see any way that's a good ending. I, I think yeah. what happened was that the finger on the trigger took over and he just kept pumping rounds and... And I'm sure that's very easy to do mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, as we said earlier, when the gun's out, that's right. the only one re re thing that's going to happen. And he probably didn't pick up on the sister. The sister was saying, they're no, both my they're brothers. So what do we have here? We have a family brothers, dispute. Right. Right. And he probably, he, he was so focused, his right. adrenaline so high, he didn't hear that. Right. So, so basically, should never have left the store. But you can see where, where he's looking out the window. There's a gun waving around. There's lots of people. There is something that wants me to go out there and stop that. Uh, what is that? But... It's Where natural, am I at? Huh? It's a natural human instinct. Okay. Am I legally covered anywhere here? Is this a good Samaritan thing? Can I call it that? It's a tough call. Uh, I, I, I'm not so sure. I think it's a bad call. And I think that fact when he shot both people and just let a whole bunch of rounds go into this melee of two guys, why? Well, I, I think his thinking is that that gun's waving around. He's the, 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 the oh, I'm going to call yeah, him the bad guy. I can buy running shoot, rounds I can, off. I can buy to some do. I can make an argument for shooting the guy with the gun. I can't make it. I can't justify shooting both guys. Right. You know? I think there was a role for him to play, Garrett. That role might have been to take the witnesses as, as far away as, as yeah, possible right. and not get involved in the shooting part. We come back, though. I'll finish more of this. I'll give you what happened, and we'll talk about it. Don't go away. Welcome back, viewers. This is a very complicated reenactment, I'm sure, as you already know. We're probably not going to have too much time to actually explain what law enforcement is expecting when they arrive with the information based upon what they have. But let me go to the follow-up, and maybe we can move through that. Uh, the gun store owner was arrested. The detective asked the gun store owner a question. Why did you feel the need to inject yourself into it? The gun shop owner replied, and I'm doing this slowly because I want you to get the quote. I see a man with a gun, and I knew there were people around. And there I was, very worried about someone else getting hurt. And that's what he said to the detective. The gun shop owner pleaded not guilty, claiming that he was acting in self-defense of himself and others. The gun, gun shop owner was charged with murder in the first. Uh, the case is still unresolved at this time. Um, no one actually died, but um, it became much more complicated legally. Very complicated. Yeah. It wasn't an immediate threat of death or severe bodily harm to him based upon the way they were rolling around. Although the other perspective is, from a defense side, he was rolling around with the gun and could have shot an innocent bystander and it would have been an imminent threat or severe bodily harm to a potential bystander. So that's what the defense would argue. Yeah, and, and I made a mistake. I, I said he was charged with first degree murder because one person did die, of course. but. Okay, so where do you want to go with this? We've only got. I, I think what's going to happen, correct me here, counselor, that this is going to be a manslaughter, probably, because it really wasn't premeditated. But, like I said before, I, I'm good with him. I mean, I can make an argument for him shooting the guy with the gun to protect himself, the female that was standing there, or the other guy on the ground. But shooting both of them. 
we, I just can't wrap my arms around that and justify that Shooting in any way. Guy. He recklessly, indiscriminately just shot two people. And yeah. that's where the training comes in. Uh, that displayed a lack of training. Yeah. Lack of training, but how is that going to play out in court? Well... Because me, one of the gun shop guys who did all this shooting, is going to say, well, you know, f rounds are being fired. I'm trying to protect myself. I feel like my life's in danger. The people around me are in danger. So that's why I shot. And that's going to be the defense, and you're going to get any witnesses that were around that were observing what was going on testify as to what they saw. And they may testify that, yeah, I was afraid I was behind a car. I was afraid I was going to get shot. So that may corroborate him from a defense perspective. And you, and you know what the sister's going to say. I told you it was my brother. I told you not to shoot. I think you just shot him. So she's going to go on the other side. Right, that's right. And the witnesses on the outside are going to say, well, you know, I don't know if I was in fear for my life, but yeah. You know. And you're going to have physical evidence. Yeah. You're going to have rounds fired. What was the trajectory? Where did they go? You know. Hey. Again, we needed much more time yeah. to do the show. There's a lot unsaid here. I know you're going to have a lot you'd like to talk to me about, so email me. But we got to go. Be safe, be trained, be alert.